We discussed last time how the software which runs on board the computer plays a key role in implementing the perception planning and control algorithms that we use to autonomously drive the car. We will now cover how the software is actually implemented. All the racing software that we use on our car is implemented using ROS. ROS stands for Robot Operating System. It is completely free and open source and provides a set of software libraries and tools that help you build robot applications which can work across a wide variety of robotic platforms. ROS is released in the form of distributions, which is a set of ROS packages. ROS distributions let developers work against a relatively stable code base. We will be using the ROS Indigo Igloo distribution for this course, which is a stable release for Ubuntu 14.04, also known as Ubuntu Trusty. In case you are wondering why we have images of turtles on the screen, don't worry about it. I promise you that their role will become very clear in due course of time. For now, all you need to know is that these turtles are called two turtles, and each distribution has an accompanying two turtle. We use ROS because it provides several packages for perception, planning, and control, and some of the packages that you will work with in this course are also shown here. In addition to that, we will be using a few ROS tools. These tools help with data visualization, diagnostics, and simulation. They will help us in developing and testing our racing algorithms. A node is a ROS-enabled program. Every time you start ROS, a ROS master node is created in the system. The role of the master node is to enable individual ROS nodes to locate one another. And once these nodes have located each other, they communicate with each other. As shown in the example here, we have nodes for interfacing with our sensors, which could be a camera in this case. We have nodes to process the data we get from the sensors, nodes to perform our motion or path planning, and nodes to execute control commands. Nodes exchange messages with each other using ROS topics and ROS messages. ROS topics are channels over which data or messages are exchanged between nodes. Nodes send and receive messages by publishing or subscribing to the topic. For instance, the LiDAR on our race car is called the Hakoyu node. This node can publish on a topic called scan. Hence, it is a publisher node. Another node in the system, say the mapping node, can subscribe to the scan topic so that it can receive any messages published by the Hakoyu node on the scan topic itself and do its planning. So a mapping node in this case becomes the subscriber. The data itself is shared in the form of ROS messages, which is really a data structure. Sticking with our Hakoyu node LiDAR example, we see that the messages published on the topic scan is of the type laser scan. As you can see, the laser scan data structure includes multiple data fields. Don't worry about if you don't understand what these fields mean. These fields correspond to the raw data obtained from the LiDAR as it scans its environment. A ROS package is a collection of one or more ROS nodes and also has a ROS interface. The interface allows it to exchange messages. ROS packages are the building blocks of code development using ROS. We saw a list of ROS packages earlier when we had listed the different packages for perception, planning, and control. So you might want to go back and take a quick look at some of those packages that you will use in this course. We will be using a lot of ROS packages for our race car, so it's important that you know your way around working with a ROS package. Here is an example of what the package's root folder looks like on your system. You can see it has definitions of different message types, the path position message in this case. It also has source files for the two different nodes in the package, the simple publisher and the simple subscriber. And other than that, there are two important files, the cmake list.txt file 
and the package.xml file. The XML file is called the package manifest, which is the package.xml file shown on your screen. It must be included within the package's root folder. This file defines several properties about the package itself, such as the package's name, the version number, the authors, and dependencies on other packages. Build dependencies specify which packages are needed to build this package itself, while run dependencies specify which packages are needed to run the code included in this package. When we work with or write our own packages later on, you will often need to edit the dependencies of the package for it to work correctly. The file cmakelist.txt is the input to the CMake build system, which is the system for building software packages. This file describes how to build the code in the package and where to install it to. Again, don't worry about what the different fields mean for now. We'll get to that later during the hands-on tutorial part. But just remember where to look for these files within the ROS package directory. Finally, let's talk about some basic ROS commands. These are commands which you should be familiar with since we will be using them a lot during this course. The very first command is called ROS core. ROS core is a collection of programs that are prerequisites for a ROS-based system. It provides naming and registration services for the rest of the nodes in the ROS system. You must have a ROS core running in order for ROS nodes to communicate. It also tracks all publishers and subscribers to all the topics. Upon running ROS core, the ROS master node is also started, along with another node called ROS out which can be used for logging and debugging all activity in the ROS code itself. The next command, called ROS run, allows you to run an executable in an arbitrary package from anywhere without having to give its full path. So for example, typing ROS run Hakoyu underscore node Hakoyu underscore node will start the execution of the Hakoyu node, which was the LiDAR node, if you recall that will allow us to use the LiDAR range sensor and get data from it. It just happens to be the case that both the package name and the node name, for example, is the same, Hakoyu node, but that will not always be the case. The ROS node command displays information about different ROS nodes. The ROS node command supported by ROS Indigo that we will be using are listed here. For instance, the ROS node list will display a set of all current nodes. So it is a useful command to make sure that all the desired perception, planning, and control nodes are running properly. Likewise, the command ROS topic displays information about the different ROS topics. You can use it to display a list of all the active topics in the system, display the publishers and subscribers to a specific topic, the publishing rate and the bandwidth of a topic, and also display the messages published to a topic itself. We will also use a tool called RWIS. RWIS is a 3D visualization tool for displaying sensor data and state information from ROS. Using RWIS, you can visualize a race car's current configuration with respect to its environment and also plot data from the sensors. Lastly, Another useful tool in ROS is called the RQT graph. RQT graph provides a graphical plugin for visualizing the ROS computation graph. The example shown here is one from a race car, and you can see there are a lot of nodes, uh, and a lot is going on in this graph over here. But you can clearly identify which nodes interact with each other and exchange data with each other, which is the whole point of using RQT graphs. As before, you should now be in a position to identify the perception, planning, and control nodes within this graph itself. So that was a brief overview of what is ROS, how it works, and what are some essential ROS commands. But hold on, I think I know what you are thinking. I had promised to tell you about two turtles which accompany ROS distributions. For practice session one, you will first learn to control a virtual turtle 
in the TurtleSim ROS simulator. That will help you in getting familiar with the ROS directory structure, different nodes, topics, and messages, and the commands that we covered in this lecture. To end practice session one, you will then use the same principles as TurtleSim, but this time to control the race car itself from your keyboard. So let's jump into the tutorial and let's get racing.